All righty. Um, so hopefully that's give you a little bit of a feel for how to work with um, uh, data frames. Just briefly go over uh, string functions. So this is if you want to work with string variables. Um, there's a number of functions for manipulating strings that I'll just quickly go through that you may find useful when you're trying to uh, create string variables for tables or um, you're just working with strings. So you can combine strings. Um, so um, combine the elements of a string either with spaces separating them with the paste function or no spaces with paste zero or with a specified separator such as a colon. This can be useful for example to create variable names like v1 to v10. Uh, you can extract subsets with the substr function, so this will extract the uh, fourth from the fourth to the sixth uh, character. Uh, you can convert to upper or lower case. There's also a number of string searching and substitution functions. So if I had a vector of strings with a bunch of names of fruits and food and things, I could use uh, the grep function. So this searches that vector for elements with the letter A in it. By default, it returns the position in the vector that have that. So apple has an A, that's the first element, banana has an A, carrot has an A, date does, egg and fig don't. If you prefer to return the value, uh, you can say value equals true. You can get the number of characters per um, character item, so apple has five letters. Sure enough, that makes sense. You can also use G sub uh, to substitute um, some particular element like space with uh, a replacement like underscore. So that's replace the spaces with underscore. In general, um, if you click F1 on G sub and you'll see all these little uh, functions. If you've used Unix, this is an example where things will look familiar. Um, if you haven't, then the terms like grep and G sub and sub will not be familiar. Um, essentially, it's a very flexible um, uh, string searching and replacement tool, and there's a whole language called regular expressions, uh, which if you've done any programming, you might have encountered. It's a very flexible way of matching not only literal strings, but also symbols like the start of a, a sentence with, um, uh, I think it's the the dollar for a start of a line and a carrot for the end, or no, it's the other way around. Um, and you can also match like characters or numbers and so on, but that's probably beyond the scope. Um, but you can look up information about the pattern matching tools available. And they're quite sophisticated, but uh, you can also do basic stuff. I thought I'd briefly mention now, um, with a lot of R stuff, there is what they call the base functionality, which is built into the base R system. And then there's often people have written the same functionality, but in a different way um, that they might find better. In particular, who here has encountered or heard of Hadley Wickham? Couple people. Okay, so that just shows how much I'm immersed in the R world. Um, so Hadley Wickham is kind of like a, a celebrity in the R world. Uh, he's uh, previously an academic from New Zealand and then went to, I think, Rice University. And now he's actually joined R Studio to help them out as well. Some of the most famous kind of add-on packages are written by Hadley Wickham. Uh, in particular, ggplot2, which is one of the, a very powerful graphing package, is written by him. He also has data manipulation tools. And he also has a, a package that does string manipulation. Um, so, yeah, if you don't like the terminology like gsub, sub, and grep, uh, Hadley has a package called string r, which essentially replaces all these string functions with maybe slightly more uh, meaningful labels. Uh, so you've got string.count, string.extract, string.search and so on. So they've all got that str underscore something. Um, so that can be quite nice. You type str underscore and you can auto complete the rest. So that's another interface. Maybe if you're learning from scratch, maybe you prefer that for string manipulation. Uh, and with a lot of stuff, yeah, you can either use the base version or what they call 
you can live in what they call the, the Hadleyverse. So that's the universe of R with Hadley Wickham packages, um, where you principally are using things like ggplot2 uh, and his data manipulation tools, string manipulation tools, and so on. Uh, if you wish to write some stuff to the console, you can use this cat function. Anyway. Uh, you can also incorporate tabs and new lines with this back, uh, sorry, this, the slash character. Slash team, slash team. All right, another really important uh, thing to do is to import uh, or export data. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Let's talk about importing data and exporting data. The most kind of universal format for data import and export, I would say, is comma separated value format, CSV. Every software package that I can think of that works with data can write a CSV file. SPSS, Status, SAS, Excel, should have a file, save as, CSV. So if you're ever wanting to get some data from something into R, perhaps the simplest option is to write to a CSV file and then use this read.csv function. So I have a data called metals.csv. Um, I'll just show you where it is. It's stored in the data folder in practice. And this, this one. And a nice thing with uh, CSV files is, at least on my computer and perhaps on yours, if you double click on it, there's a good chance it will open in Excel, um, <laughs> if your Excel works. Um, yep, so something like that, and you can have a look at it. It's, this is just some um, Winter Olympic medal starter on who's won which country, what, which one, which middles. Uh, the point is, yeah, you can view it in Excel, you can export from Excel and so on. Um, so to import this data file, um, I use the read.csv function and I just specify the path to that file. Now, this is really important to notice. Notice that it's in the data directory and then the practice directory and there's a file called metals.csv. Now, the only reason that this works is because R knows that the working directory is training exercises. So that is the starting point. So it starts by thinking you're in training exercises. So when I say data, that's relative to the training exercises directory. R Studio should also auto-complete, which makes things nice. So I can go D A, hopefully data. Uh, Practice, uh, metals.csv. So that's a nice way to make sure you've typed it in right. If you're not in the right working directory, you're going to have a bad time. So once it's in there, you can do all the normal things like check that the first few rows look right, <clears throat> check the last few rows, check that the dimensions look right. A more general text importing function is read.table. So that will allow for space separated, tab separated, um, with and without headers, all sorts of options. So this was a tab separated data file and that worked. Okay. Um, if you want to import an Excel file, uh, you can use um, the gdata library, um, which you may or may not have on your computer. Um, it does require Perl if you're on Windows. So it's one of the ones that does require some extra stuff. And you can Im import um, an Excel file using read.xls. Uh, likewise, there's something similar um, for xlsx files, and you can import particular sheets like that. It's a bit slower. Um, more recently, uh, Hadley Wickham has written the read.xl package, uh, and that does not require you to install Perl or Java, so no matter what platform you're on, it should just work outside, you know, straight away. So that's probably the function to use going forward. Um, so you've got this read.xl function. And notice I've made it explicit, just for clarity, that we're, that's from the read.xl package. So that's just reading in an Excel file. If you work with SPSS, data, uh, SAS, then there's import functions for all those formats. 
generally you would load the library, uh, the foreign library, i.e. for foreign packages. Um, or maybe I can just show you. So you can see it's got is DTA that's data, I think. Um, I'm not sure what SAS format is, but there's a SAS one in here somewhere. Um, Read.spss is the one that I often have to use in, being in psychology. Um, and yeah, so you just put in the, like a, the native format and maybe specify some options. Um, and sometimes that can be nice. I know with SPSS at least, they're important for variable labels, which can be something useful that's not always um, built into R. Yeah, so you can do read.dta, read.sas. More recently, and you may have had installation issues with this because this is kind of almost too cutting edge to use yet, but this looks quite nice. It's literally come out in the last few months. It's called the Rio package, and it just has a simple import and export option, and supposedly it will work everything out based on your file name and do something intelligent. So it's a bit more like a file open. You pick the file and it will just import. If it's a SAV, it'll import it as SPCS. Um, it's quite cutting edge and it's, I've, I've noticed a few little bugs at this point, but it might be an option to keep an eye on um, over time. So that was very simple just to import um, a SAV file, XLS and so on. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty, pretty cool, I think. But maybe it's not, there's a few little bugs being ironed out. Uh, if you want to export data, so you want to essentially get it into another program, um, there's a range of options. But first off, if you want to just save a data frame for future use in R, then the save function is, is pretty good. So you just put the name of the data set and then file equals and that will create an R data object. I don't think any program other than R reads R data format. So it's not for exporting to other programs. You can reload that with load. But if you want to transfer some R data to some other program, the simplest option is to write to CSV. Um, you know, or using the read write table. Um, alternatively, there are a range of writing in native formats. Uh, you know, write to Excel, write to um, SPSS, and so on. Um, but perhaps, yeah, the simplest option is just to write to CSV. So given that importing and exporting data is that important, um, yeah, I think it would be good to uh, just have a little uh, practice uh, for uh, maybe till uh, 40 past uh, on um, just get importing a, a data set and, um, yeah, having a little a play with it to practice some of the data frame uh, manipulation tools.